All right, it is Wednesday, June 10th, and we are live on this fan's view. We have Carl, John, Lauren, Anthony, myself, and very special guest, Lou Nolan. Welcome, everybody. Hey, Don. Great to be here. Thank you. All right. How's everybody doing? Good? Good. All right. A little hot. (laughs) It is a little hot and humid. So we will kick it over to John. John, what we got with uh, who wore best? All right, we're, we'll recap uh, last week's uh, contest with number 15. Uh, Steve Van Buren had a little bit of an upset, I think, over Dick Allen. Uh, I was a little surprised uh, that it wasn't a little closer, let's put it that way. Uh, but uh, Dick Allen came in second, Hal Greer came in third, and uh, Terry Crisp came in fourth. And, and, and we could, we could might, I might even say it was a two-horse two race in this one because we did have Smarty Jones in the contest. Somebody, somebody <laughs> voted him in. So. Uh, that was Belinda, by the way. <laughs> Was it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we, had, we ended up having he, Smarty Jones ended up having five votes, so you know it was. It, he, uh, there you go. He had a how, little bit uh, over. John, how close was Steve Van Buren to uh, Dick Allen? I was I was surprised <laughs> by that upset as well. Yeah, it was one forty four for uh, Steve Van Buren and one fifteen for uh, Dick Allen. Why do you think that is? I don't know. I was like I said, I was a little surprised. Um, just just with the baseball. Um, Maybe just the signs of the time with baseball right now. I don't know, um, Maybe. but uh, but yeah, it was it was uh, it was it was interesting. But like I said, it, it came down to those two guys, and that's you know, should, who should have came you know, down. Both, to. both guys are vet, really veteran players that have been in another era, so it's not like you know the one that all the young people know against one that all the people that have right. miles know. You know. Yes, exactly. Yep. Yep. That, that was the uh, battle for all the uh, old heads of, of us viewers that were watching the, uh, last week with Hal Greer and uh, Terry Crisp as well as uh, as the four candidates we had. Um, so, uh, so th- this week we got number sixteen. We're gonna have a you know a little bit of an interesting conversation, and we, we, we were uh, we're honored here to have Lou Nolan here with us to talk about number sixteen as well. Um, so we got uh, Don Money for the Phillies. Uh, he hit the first home run at the vet. Uh, last third baseman to play before Mike Schmidt came in. Uh, we had Norm Sneed, uh, four-time Pro Bowler, once with the Eagles. Uh, and for the Sixers, we had Marquis Spates. Uh, he was the 16th overall, overall pick in 2008. Uh, won, won an NBA or NCAA championship in with Florida in 07. And then I guess the probably the, the odds-on favorite for uh, <laughs> for the Flyers for number 16 is that one Bobby Clark. <laughs> You've only got an hour, John, so you can't you can't read all of them. <laughs> all right. Well then, well then, we'll just we'll just we'll just pick on a couple of them. Then you know he uh, rookie of the year, Sporting News rookie of the year in '69. He was he was he was the first uh, player from an expansion team to score 100 points in a season. Eight time All Star, two time Stanley Cup champion, the captain of the team when he was 23 years old, Mr. Bobby Clark. So there you uh, go. So, yeah, you know, and that just narrows it down. He's you know from Flint Flon, Canada. You know he's Mr. Hockey in Philadelphia. So uh, no doubt. So um, <laughs> you know it, it, it should be a, uh, you know a nice 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 conversation tonight. And uh, you know obviously we know who Carl's voting for. You know, he, he votes for all hockey players, no matter who they are. <laughs> but, <laughs> But uh, Mario, who, who do you ask? Sorry, really. <laughs> all right, yeah, I, I guess I gotta. I guess I gotta say it. So I'll, I'll go Clarky. All right, Lauren. Well, as much as I don't want to vote Clark, just so I can mess up the unanimous decision, because that's what happened last time we did this. Um, and I do have a good Don Money story, but that can be for later. But uh, I'm I'm gonna go with Clark. All right. Anthony? Yes, I agree. I don't, I don't have much to add other than that. <laughs> as much as I would love to just mess up the unanimous vote because, man, that would really, that would excite me because we couldn't get I wanna hear unanimous the unanimous money story. What? I want to hear the Don Money story. You know the Don Money story. I do? Yeah, when he walked into um, 1217 Darby Road when it was an autograph signing and I was at the front. 
Um, and I don't know if mom had gone to the bathroom or stepped in. I don't know where mom was, but I was by myself up front. And I was trying to sell the tickets or whatever. And in walks this guy. And I don't know who Don Money is. I don't, I don't know what this man's supposed to look like. And I was like, oh, are you here for the signing? And he looked at me as innocently as possible and was like, honey, I am the signing. I'm, I'm the and I mean, I was like eight or nine years old, so I was super embarrassed. But I don't even know that I could pick him out of a lineup right now. Um, but yeah, that's my, that's my claim to fame with Don Money. So. Uh, too funny. You were expecting him to wear his baseball uniform, right? I don't know what I expected. I just... <laughs> Uh, too funny. That's good. Lo, Lo, who do you have? Do I get a vote here? You yeah. do. If it was a basketball game, uh, it would be one six. <laughs> We're all six teams, but Bob Clark. I mean, why not? I mean, so many of his games, thousand anyway. I guess I don't know. Exactly. What a player! Did, did, did he pay? Did he pay to, to say that? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What did they make him? I'll give you a couple of his picks. There you yeah, go. He uh, was uh, heart and soul, and you know, couldn't do anything wrong as far as uh, uh, Ed Snyder saw it. Mm. And uh, I agree. I mean, he was not easy to get along with a lot of times because he was a great captain. And great captains aren't always uh, popular with everybody. Uh, you know, take into account Chris Pronger, who uh, was tough sometimes, but was a great captain when he was captain. Uh, and uh, got a, a Keith Primo. I mean, these guys were tough. And right. they're not afraid to say what, what was on their mind and to get guys moving. But, boy, Bob just, he just did it from the time that, then he got on the ice till the time he got off every shift. And I think about those uh, pictures of him, uh, I guess, in the playoffs where he's cut before they worried about blood on the jerseys and he got <laughs> blood all over him and he's getting ready for a face-off. And he's basically looking to see where the other players are for, for the face-off to make sure they're in the right spot. But uh, nothing ever got in the way. Mm. Remember how high he jumped when I was in Boston with the team in that game two, the finals? He scored that goal in overtime. Boy, oh boy. I never saw him jump so high. But, right. uh, it's good memory. Well, there you go. All right. All right. So, Carl, who, who do you have? Let's take a, <laughs> the suspense off of this one. I can't believe you didn't even ask. <laughs> I can't believe you are either. Well, we had to make, we had to make I, it yeah. public. It, it, I think it's just for, the, just for the record. This 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 is uh, I don't know a few people put it on put it on our, our page a few times that uh, it, it's definitely a one horse race I don't I don't think anybody's even even gonna you know garnish a vote. Well, and I kept asking him. I thought Caesar Hernandez was going to pull away with it. Who? <laughs> <laughs> so how 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 close was was that one? That one wasn't too close at all. I uh, Don Money, so. yeah, Don Money uh, pulled that one away. Um, by a lot, and actually, uh, I believe Sam Well ended up being second, actually, um, with uh, and, and he he had he wore it that one year in '83. Um, so uh, why, why even vote? Yes. Why does Steve Harris's comment jump out at me and I can read it four feet away? Why <laughs> even have a vote? Because I, I think a lot of people are asking themselves that question. Because he he used it in bold print, so we we pick on him. He, 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 <laughs> He's egging us on to pick on him, but we, we already know we're going to pick on him eventually. Just to <laughs> get the gig. How come I didn't get invited? <laughs> That's what I'm waiting for. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, John, I, I, this is your vote. I, I'm going to go, obviously, with Bobby Clark as well. I mean, come you know, on. Well, was hey. your pressure. You know you wanted to go with Don Money. I did. No, I, I think I you really wanted to go with Spites. You wanted to go with Spites, didn't you? Mike, Mike Spates. Michael Spates. Mike, 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 yeah. Can't pronounce his name right. So Mary Spates. Yeah. Um, no, def definitely Bobby Clark. I mean, like like we would do with all the other ones. He's the Hall of Famer in the group. Um, you know, you, you can't go, can't go wrong. Um, you know, Tom, Tom Money was here for a few years, and but uh, that that was back in the '60s and '70s. So, so is this our first unanimous voting? For us, for us as, as the, the host, yeah. Yeah, you, usually your dad messes it up. Right, well, which yeah. is why I wanted to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap. 
<laughs> he, he's ready to have a heart attack over there. <laughs> you guys don't even remember which one that was. Um. Let's go back to the numbers. I'm sure we can pick out every single yeah, one. Give me enough time. <laughs> no, I think he did. He vote for Allen Iverson. Oh, no, he didn't. That, no. No, it went no. Harper. Oh, that's right. You did go Harper. No, I, I, think, I think I think it was the, no, not the was it Wilt? No, no he voted he for Wilt. Wilt. No, he, Wilt. It, it was a recent. It was a recent one. That, it was. It a was. Recent one. Was it the Nick Foles one? Might have been. Because that he knows that would have really aggravated me. <laughs> right. That's probably the one. <laughs> he got away with that. Yeah. Oh yeah. So enough about our votes and our numbers. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. We, absolutely. We got we got Lou and all in here. Uh, just and just we lost time. Carl. That's all right. Just, <laughs> yeah, Lou's uh, here. We got we got our uh, our hockey talk here tonight. Yeah. We got the you know hockey's coming back. So Lou, Lou, do you have any any insights as far as what when hockey's coming back and how do you how do you like the the playoff schedule? Well, I like what happened and what they decided to do. I was a little bit concerned when they were going to do. 12 teams in the West, 12 teams in the East. I thought maybe that some people that didn't deserve to be in the playoffs were suddenly there. But the first round is not the playoffs. The first round is the ability to move into the playoffs. Uh, the top four teams uh, play the round robin. And then after that... Excuse me, I got an emergency. Yep. After that, uh, you know, the, uh, the rest of the teams... Start eliminating one another, and when when Gary Bettman told us what was going on and how he was going to do it, the one thing they did not know was how they'd reseed. You remember that? Mm. And yep. They decided that they wouldn't go in brackets; they just reseed high, low, high, low, high, low, which is the way it really ought to be. Mm -hmm. So, exactly. uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty pleased. Everybody's starting the same. You know, the guys that are injured get a chance to relax and get themselves together, uh, making the, uh, the choices of who's playing where, uh, uh, certainly, uh, and who's going to play, tougher on the coaches. Right. But that, that's why they get paid. They'll figure it out. They're, this is a great coaching staff. And uh, exactly. the momentum that was built by this team uh, is good. And uh, you're all starting to pretty much even. You know, nobody has been playing, and they will play three games before the actual playoffs start. So uh, they get a chance to, to play together and, and get back in the groove. But I how, how excited! Right for the play-in, isn't that what it is? Five-game series. So theoretically, yeah, everybody can play three games or maybe five. I don't know. Right. But, uh, happy with. Right. But how, how much? How much would you have liked to have seen the Flyers take that momentum that they had built it in and, and not have the the break? That carry that, you know, potentially into a, you know, a bigger Stanley Cup run, um, with, with that. Well, hot I mean, it's obvious that the team was going well. We have done well in the last ten, and we should have uh, continued if we could have. But I mean, like everything else, you know, we had this COVID nineteen situation going on, right? And uh, it just it hit everybody. Uh, all of us stayed at home. We wore masks most of the time. We social distanced. We did a lot of things. Mm -hmm. We're starting to out of it a little bit now, but I can't imagine that uh, we'd be able to continue with 20,000 people in the building right. uh, and what would have happened. So I think good decisions were made, but, yeah, it would have been great to see it go on. Who knows? Who right, knows? exactly, exactly. Yep. And you think to be able to – Go ahead, go ahead, John. No, no, no go, go, go for it. Right. Do you think they'll be, they'll be able to pick up where they left off? Uh, I do. Uh, again, I think, you know, they everybody's starting off a pretty even keel. So uh, I think that uh, they will be able to pick up. You know, the, the goaltenders got to get some practice and some games in. And, uh, you know, the young kid, we'll see what happens. He's not been to the playoffs before. So uh should be interesting. He's a great kid, by the way. All right. Zach right. together, yeah. heads together. I don't know if you've ever had a chance to meet him, but you would like him. He's just a wonderful young guy who can really play. 
with, with all his experience, though, like in the juniors and like the World's Cups, like, do you think that will help and benefit him through the playoffs? Whereas, obviously, it's not the same caliber you know, or the same pressures, maybe, but but he, he's had many pressures in his games growing well, up. Yeah, he's had lots of pressure, and you know, he's had a sports psychologist since he was young. The same guy he talks to all the time. And uh, goalies are different. You know, they have to play, <laughs> play a game. It's a bad game. It's gone. They can't worry about it. And he's had his share of that up here, uh, certainly. But mm-hmm. uh, he, it, it's not like he's going to play 82 games and then an entire playoff. He's played the games to, to this point. to play a few more and go into the playoffs. But he's had rest. He's had rest. So all those young guys who uh, had to get used to a, uh, a schedule with preseason, 82 games, you know, they don't really have to do that in their first year of the rookie state. They can just uh, look back after this year's all done and, and probably still be fairly strong and in shape. Hmm, very good. And will be worn down. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. That's right. All right. So, uh, so, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, Mary. I was going to uh, ask Brian's question. Go right ahead. Um, so, Lou, Brian is wondering, do you have a favorite player to announce, kind of like Harry, Harry Callis did? Is there somebody um, from the Flyers, past or present, um, that you enjoy announcing the most? Yeah, I, I like the French guys because uh, they just roll right <laughs> up your tongue like Simon Gagné. You know, and, and he was always one of my favorites. Uh, and there are guys that were really difficult, like Antero Mitamaki. <laughs> it took me almost a whole year to get that one. Until I broke it down <laughs> syllables, and uh, Gary Thorne, who was ESPN's guy on the air, didn't have it. It was just one of those names that you can't quite get. But uh, Gagne is one of my favorites, and I always like our guys when they uh, when they score a lot of goals. You know, I always like uh, <laughs> Michael Rutherford and just saying those. I, I said so many times that Legion of Doom. There's three of them. Right. And same with Bob Clark, Reggie, and, and, and uh, Billy Barber, who, uh, you know, Billy is a great player. And if, had he not played in the same time frame as Bob Clark, he would have been better and better and even more revered here on Philadelphia than he is. And he played every situation, you know, power play, penalty kill, everything. So uh, Billy's a great guy. And, uh, boy, what a player. Mm. Did, did you ever have a name where you act, just had to go up to the guy and say, how do you pronounce this? Yeah, uh, I've said that a number of times. Okay. Um, what I usually do, I'll look at the roster. I prepare. I'm there about two hours before the game, and I prepare. And if there's somebody that I don't know, during the day I will have looked up the pronunciation guide in the NHL. We have one. And, and young guys aren't really on it all the time. And uh, so I'll go down and I'll talk to them. And uh, either, either talk to the player or talk to the, the PR guy that's traveling with them and uh, get the pronunciations there. Oftentimes, if they're really strange, and I don't remember what, what it was, but the PR guy will go get the player and say, this is Lou. He wants to know how to pronounce your name. And the guy said to me, last time it happened, he said, I'm not playing anyway, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but here's how you do it. He's a great guy. Hockey player good people. They are they're very good. There's different different uh, special breed. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, they're, they're, they're all they're all nice guys, uh, for the most part. Uh, so, well, I'll I'll ask Sean's question. Sean wants to know if has have the locations been determined yet? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, okay. I've heard that Las Vegas and Columbus are the east and west front runners. Um, I'm not sure how much ice they have in Columbus, what the practice rinks are like. Right. Whether they have a rink attached to the, you know, practice rink attached. Um, but here in Philly, I think we just didn't emerge from the COVID thing very well. And then now we're having some other problems, as you well know. Right. So right. I think Philly's out. Uh, but, you know, you've got 12 teams that have to practice. Right. Right. And, and, that, and, they can't be on the ice at the same time for practice. So you, there got to be more than one facility, at least more than one, maybe more than two maybe if they can find them. And uh, hotels, 
family parties of 50, I understand. So limited to 50. Players, management, trainers, uh, everybody will be 50. So we'll I think it's going to it's going to be interesting to see how they're going to do this. There's not going to be any fans, so you'll be able to hear a lot of the players yelling at one another. <laughs> they may have to uh, <laughs> have a seven-second delay or maybe more. Yeah, there have been a few of those. The penalty box, too, yeah. you know. It gets on once in a while. But uh, I, I, would, I would venture a, a strong guess that fans in Philly will be able to see it somehow other than on their TV. I'm not sure, but I would think that they would do something somewhere. And it can't be – I don't think it can be endured at Xfinity, which would be a great idea. But uh, who knows by then, maybe. Couldn't they do it outside of Xfinity? I don't know. I would think it would you know, be like the drive-in movies, right? Yeah, there's, <laughs> they're starting to make a comeback too from what I hear. Really good question. Good question and uh, – I think that uh, that's to come. Must be figured out. There are a lot of logistics. But, right. You know, people can pay to figure that stuff out. Yeah, that's <laughs> very true. It's above my pay grade. Mm-hmm. Mine too. <laughs> Lou, do you have a special piece of like Flyers memorabilia maybe that's more important to you than others, maybe from the cup years? Uh yeah, I've got a couple things. I mean, I, I, you know, I've got a stick signed by the Cup team uh, with a plaque on it. Uh, you know, that that's important to me. I'm, I'm not a big saver of things, although I do have 75 or 80 signed hockey sticks from a lot of Hall of Famers. And, uh, you know, uh, two, of, two of your dad's favorite players – Old Colorado Avalanche. He hasn't made me any offers yet, but I'm not out of here tonight. So, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I, I I've saved a number of things from there, but uh, would one stand out? I don't know. This ring that I got before we won the cup. I don't have a cup ring, uh, but uh, this one is one that uh, it's probably the only one that's above ground now. There were three of them. And the two of them are buried, one with Fred Shiro and the other with uh, Ted Gendron, who was our press box guy. So this is the only one left. It's a gold ring that uh, Justin was selling through the league, and I got one. And uh, it's a nice ring, so it's pretty unique. Hmm. That was, I got that in April when we started to play the playoffs. And I had it on every day, and I wear it a lot now. and That's close to my heart. Sure. Like you're fine for it, the two boys. I don't know how to do that. I gotta get another ring. <laughs> <laughs> now, 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 growing up in Philadelphia, how did you become a uh, the, the a PA announcer for the, for the Flyers? And, and, and what well, you know, uh, well, since hockey, hockey wasn't a Philadelphia you know sport uh, really to begin with, and not really, not NHL anyway. When I was right. in grade school, uh, through grade school, I had a good friend. His name was George Lennon. Uh, went into the priesthood, and uh, n- nice guy. His uncle was a gold judge for the Ramblers. His name also was George Lennon. And he would take us on Friday nights up to the arena at 46th and Market Street. And you know, we're in eighth grade. I'm like 12 years old. We'd run around the rink. We were rink rats, and then we'd skate after. <laughs> you could skate after games there. And uh, we had a good time. And, you know, we'd take broken sticks home and tape them up and put on a Chicago shoe skates and go skate behind the school on this newly resurfaced place and street and uh, draw nets and try to figure out what the uses of puck, shoe boxes, <laughs> shoe plants, <laughs> polish, wrapped in tape and stuff. And so when, uh, when I was down the beach chasing women, um, <laughs> I went down to Joe Twilak and uh, he got the job as the Flyers' first PR guy. And I had always followed the original six during that time. And uh, pre, pre-NHL here, they used to be on television. And uh, so I said, if you need somebody to help you, I'll help you. you know, maybe I know a little bit about it. He said, we'll see. So we celebrated him getting the job. And 
I went to a couple of press conferences and started working in the press box on their phone, announcing goals and things like that, scratches. And the announcer left, got kind of Kevin Johnson. He went with the World Hockey Association Blazers and uh, as their PR man. And then he was soon out of a job when they moved to Vancouver. And uh, I took that job. I told Lou Scheinfeld I wanted to be that, wanted to be down there. So I'm missing all the goals. There weren't TVs every five feet. There were no TVs in there. And mm. you know, I'll be writing names down, score. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I missed a lot of goals those first few years, but I made up for it. And, um, you know, ever since then, it's just been something I've tried to be a conduit, you know, and um, not not uh, do anything spectacular, just do my job. And uh, when I had a chance to be out on the ice, it was fun to talk to that many people and run a ceremony. Right. Uh, good fun. Good fun. I've, uh, it's been great. It's been great. Yeah. Got me here. Exactly. <laughs> you know, right? well, I love it. We're glad that you've you done it. 48, I think. This will be 48 when we get past this playoffs and stuff. I think I'm in 47 now. Uh, 48 next season. Wow. I don't know. 49. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's 48. 48 years this year. Okay. I'm glad that, somebody's keeping quiet. Is that was what you're saying with us? No, that's only because he, he he started when I was born. I mean, not to make you sound older. <laughs> Jeez, John. <laughs> I started when you were born? Hey, yes, you right. did. <laughs> but but that, that's the only reason I know is 48 years old. So. <laughs> Quick story about longevity. You know, my hair now used to be black. I've gone through periods where I had a little fro going when it was a thing, and one thing and another. Is that the same guy? It's the same guy on the back of the book, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so last year, last season, season before this one, I'm in the locker room after the game, and, you know, there are uh, – uh, what usually happens is that uh, they'll bring a guy in. The guys are basically hiding. They'll bring a guy in. And, the leaders in the press box have said who they want to interview. So those guys are on the board, and Zach will bring somebody in. And then the whole cadre of sports writers will move from one place to another, depending on whether the guy's there or the guy's there. And there was a young kid in there with a mic just sticking it in everybody's face to get some sound bites. And he said something to me about how long have I been the answer a long time with all this. I said, well... You know, my hair used to be black, and now it's gray. And he said, oh, no, your hair is silver. <laughs> I like this kid, you know. <laughs> it ain't silver, but uh, it's still there, which is fortunate. So, exactly. I just had to tell you that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so what does Luke Nolan do to relax? What do I do to relax? Uh, I collect duck decoys, antiques, uh, and contemporary birds from people I know who carve, and I've got a bunch of them. Uh, so that's what I try to do to relax. Go to the beach, Ocean City. We'll go down on Thursday night, our first time this year. Come back on Monday. Uh, once in a while, I go to the beach. Ellen likes the beach, but I'm not a big beach guy. I'd rather sit on the back deck and have a cocktail and read. But um, I like going to the beach, and once in a while, I find a, a duck decoy somewhere and mostly now my collection is such that I need to get them from uh, dealers or shows. They're actually shows where you know big shows where everybody's selling ducks. Old duck, expensive ducks and ducks that I can afford. So that's what I do to relax. Well I, I thought you wrote you uh read uh, William Shakespeare. Uh yes uh yeah I did a little a little shaky uh just for, uh, for that little video. There's all the ducks in that video. <laughs> What's that? You could see the ducks in that video. <laughs> I, I can hear what you said. They're the ducks. In yeah, oh, the ducks. ducks. Yeah, I guess you could. See them in the yeah. video. Yep. Yeah. Not quite intentional, but I didn't know what else to stand in front of or sit. I had to be <laughs> reading, so I had to be relaxed. Right. Yeah. So, uh, the book wasn't even Shakespeare's book. <laughs> I had to go in large lettering 
stuffed in the book and taped in. So, you know. <laughs> I didn't even know. Hey, so, so the, the book and it was the prop was that if the walls could talk? <laughs> what was that? No, it wasn't if the walls could talk. That's yeah, you should have been reading that book. <laughs> That's, that would have been better. Well, you know, I was the producer. So, you know, I've learned it out through the years. The producer gets the ideas and the talent makes it happen. All right. So, uh, That's fair. Kevin was a producer and a talent in all of these. He's got seven now. Seven. Wow. That was number seven. So. Yeah. Well, you did. You did a good job with it. Absolutely. I think that was the star. That chord, the way he did the pull away and kept talking <laughs> about people after people, person after person after person after person. That is he was great. Trying, he was trying to steal the show. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, great segue on the book. Mm -hmm. and, uh, if these walls could talk, and I'm not talking about these walls because uh, we know they already talk. If you guys <laughs> saw me running around, I guess the, the people upstairs that live above me uh, had a little had a little leak, so I was trying to find a bucket to, to catch all this water. Oh. So just in case you guys caught me uh, running around, it wasn't on purpose. But uh, the uh, if these walls could talk, this is a great Father's Day gift for uh, for a lot of dads that uh, should have this in their collection. Um, they can get it a couple of different ways. You can buy it on Amazon, but that's boring. You need to contact <laughs> Lou on uh, Facebook. Lou can make it happen. Um, and Lou, if, if these are local people, they can pick it up here. Sure, yeah. Carl has them here, I know. And, I have a couple here, but if you guys order it direct with Lou, you know, I don't mind being the middle guy for anybody who wants the book for Father's Day. Lou will sign it. He'll personalize it, whatever you guys want. Uh, great read. Great read. Um, there's some there's some stuff in there that um, it's good. It's good. You, you, you let it all out. Oh, uh, not all of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's for book uh, number two, Carl. Story. Yeah. <laughs> I was telling somebody a story today. Uh, if you'll recall, the Flyers Carnival now has been like 35 or 40 years or something like that. So the early carnivals, they used to run a uh, – back when we were in Spectrum, I guess. It wasn't the board to do all these things and you weren't sold everything. Uh, and hear the weather forecast and all these things that you hear. So we'd have time between the periods, and they used to – after the carnival, the big thing was to get awarded a check, a large check, with the proceeds. So, one time uh, they, I awarded the check, and they rolled a big, thick, orange carpet out, and the wives were all lined up, and they came all out, and were all duded up, you know, with flowers and all these things. And as they, the doctors were coming out, we're going to hand out the check. As they got to the end of this carpet, I mean a big shag rug, they rolled it out, and there was a mouse in it. <laughs> and immediately I said, this is not good. You know, the mouse is either going to run away and run all over the rink. Oh. They had it. So, or the girls will run off. So I picked it up, and I put it in my pocket. You know, it, like, <laughs> and it went, oh, like this, looked around. By that time, I picked it up and I put it in my suit jacket. So I'm talking and my jacket's going like, going back and forth. <laughs> and I'm giving this presentation. It finishes and I walk over where all the girls are going off. And I said, well, that was really great. You guys were great. And they're all laughing. And uh, I said, there was one problem that you didn't know about. And they said, what was that? And I reached in, I felt the tail, and I said, this was on the rug. Ah! It went all over the place. So. That's not in the book. I don't think. Well, that, that was a this fan's view exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of the book, which which chapter was your favorite to write? Wow. Well, do you have one? I don't think I have one. I I, I, I like the one about uh, rating the favorites. You know, the toughest fighters. Uh, my favorite guys in the box, things of that nature. And uh, the way it really worked with Sam Carcini, who really did all the writing, is we we met one day a week, 
for 12 weeks and we just talked and he recorded it we had lunch and we talked about a lot of different variety of things and figured out what the chapters would be and um you know they're all good my chapter on ed snyder meant a lot to me because uh he has meant a lot to me uh, he was always ed to me and uh, even Clarky always called him mr snyder he never right. called him ed. Right. and i remember when you come down the hallway and there'd be guards there and he'd say hey lou how you doing i said i'm fine ed how about yourself and they'd like look at me out of the corner of their eyes and said he just called me Ed. So, <laughs> the little things just the little things and he always said call me ed and some guys did and some guys did but this chapter was meant a lot to me yeah, yeah his I, I, I did his uh his ceremony uh memorial ceremony i was the mc of that and uh that was amazing just amazing at the center uh i don't know i i, I lost for words he's a great man and without him we don't have any hockey in here no you know? yeah you got that right <clears throat> yep what um we probably could talk about it for an hour what made him stand out what made him so special I mean, there's there's owners of, of a lot of teams. Yes, uh, I I've, think that I've ahead. never heard I've never heard a player, a person, anyone say anything bad about the man. Well, he could take you in the pivot, which something was not to his liking, uh, without any problem. Never had to do. He did it once with me, and I think that is in the book. But uh, um, it just uh, he, he was close to his players. He loved his players. Uh, he was a great guy. The fans loved him. He, you know, he would sit in that uh, at the spectrum in that uh, box where he sat, and they'd walk by him. He'd be high fiving people after games. He was he was able to, you were able to see him. It's not like you know you see a guy like Kraft from Buffalo, New England. I mean, hey, where's Mister Kraft? He's, uh, you know, <laughs> you can't with Ed. He was always there, front and center. And uh, he always had a vision with the Youth Hockey Foundation, which is, you know, now fantastic. Uh, you know, 4,000 kids who would never get a chance, and they can't play hockey until they get on the computers and do their homework. So, uh, and they're in college, they're getting master's degrees. The one young lady who was captain of the Westchester hockey team that won a, a, a NCAA championship. She had never skated before she skated at Simmons Rink. I mean, there's stories about and uh, Ed was a, a wonderful guy. Uh, I remember once, one, one Ed story. Uh, he used to have a phone that connected to me. And when something strange would happen, he would call, the phone would ring and he'd say, Lou, this is Ed. What's going on? You know, what, what is going on with these refs? Or what are they doing? And I tell But one day, it was a huge fight. You know? Bob Myers was a ref and he came over to me. And I worked with that glass back in those days. So hand him a pad if you want to taper and all just writing down things and um, you know uh, it's 10 minutes and the bench clears and guys are punching each other it's a mess so just as Bob comes over to me and starts to tell myself and the penalty timekeeper what the penalties are the phone rings right so I pick it up I say yes he says Lou this is Ed I said Ed just a minute I put the phone down okay <laughs> I put the phone down. We took the penalties. I picked the phone up and I said, yes, Ed. He says, Lou, there's stuff that you and I have to get straight between us. He says, when I call you, you put the referee on hold. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Ed. No problem. But he had a way of, uh, of uh, expressing himself uh, and being, a, he was like a friend, but he could be tough. Could be tough when he had to be, as I'm sure he was with, uh, you know, his general managers. And you think about it, if I think about one thing that he did that I would question was that he told Paul Holmgren, go out and get the best goalie you can. And he was a Russian guy who was still getting paid, right? Brzgalov, who was the only guy that I really don't like because – he uh, threw me under the bus while we were on the air together. I was interviewing him and threw me under the bus. So most other guys are great. Chris, don't like him. 
I don't think Ed does her homework. Not that anymore. guys, we don't like Briz. All right. Nope. Got it. <laughs> we, don't, we don't have him on the show. It <laughs> was an option. You don't want money. Yeah, right. Is he still he, living in South Jersey? Do you I know? believe so. I think he's still in South Jersey. He's, goes with kids' games. His country probably that didn't want him back. I don't know. He's making a lot of money. He was over there. They probably kidnapped and steal his money. Right. <laughs> A he, lot was of money he was attending flyer fees for a while. Yeah, he would show up. He, uh, I mean, when he came in, I remember that he did everything right. You know, he went and visited the Liberty Bell. He went to Betsy Ross house. I mean, they had him eating cheesesteaks, you know, the next big guy. And he was just crazy. He was nuts. You know, he was, he was crazy. It's and in here, folks. That is in there. It's in there. <laughs> It's the best 20 bucks you can possibly spend right here. <laughs> Great Father's Day present. I think that's a good idea. <laughs> so, um, so we do have a question. Sorry. Uh, John, right. off. Um, we did have a question. I think it was Sean who asked a little while ago. Other than um, the cup teams, is there? did you have a favorite Flyers team other than the teams that won the Stanley Cup? Uh, sure. Uh, the last couple of years with the young guys, they get along so well. Uh, you know, when uh, when Drew and Borchek and those guys and Lindblom, they're all they're all here and they're all good guys. They're all playing soccer before the game at a big ring. And, you know, back, they keep, just keep the ball up. It's fantastic to watch these guys with their head and eye to get warmed up. They just keep the ball up, and it's 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 off shoulders, it's off knees, it's off feet, and they really compete. I mean, they compete in everything, and they have a basketball hoop that they play at when it's when it's over. And I don't often talk to the guys there, but uh, the young guys—they're just great guys, you know. And uh, always, always fun. Uh, they come out in the hallway now. Uh, used to be back in the old days that they'd all come charging out of the room at one time, led by the goalie. And then when uh, Richards and Carter came came in. They came out in the hall beforehand and just stretched around and looked at their sticks and did all these kinds of things. And now three quarters of the team is in the hallway. They're all over the place. You know, Michael Raffle, great guy, good friend. You know, he's out early. Give me a hug. Hey, Louie, how you doing? You know, and all this stuff like that. I mean, just great people. Um, and uh, and then the one goalie will, will stay out. One goalie will wait. You know, they do different things when they're starting. And uh, it used to be that Simmons would count it down. You know, he'd say, 30, 15, okay, here we go. And then they'd start to, start to pile in in a certain order. And, um, you know, um, it's just such a, such a different time now. They're young. They have fun. Everything they do is fun. But they are very, very competitive when they're playing those other sports that warm themselves up. So I like the last couple of years, too. I like their teams. I like the team that played the Russians. Of course, that was basically the cup team with a couple of guys added. I mean, I right. traveled with those guys a lot back in the cup years and the early years. So, you know, Fridays, I'd, I'd get on the plane and we'd go to Montreal and Toronto and places like that. I'd get on all the charters. And uh, it was a lot of fun. You know, you get to know the guys better. Uh, I remember once I, we were marooned somewhere by snow. We just got the guy, Mark Stratton from Pittsburgh, a long time back. And uh, I, he was in the bus and he was sitting by himself. And I moved in to say hello to him. And I sat on his soft hat. He had a, he had a hat. I, I sat on the guy's hat. He said, you're sitting on my hat, man. And I had never even met him before. So stuff like that. And, Buses back from Montreal and train rides Montreal, Toronto, and snowstorms. Wow, it's in it. It's so a lot of fun. I have a question. Right here. That's twenty bucks you can spend on Dad for Father's Day. Oh, I love this guy. No <laughs> Laura and I already have a copy. I know. <laughs> You're like the most impossible father to buy for. Well. Well, don't buy him any memorabilia, any size. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Most most dads will take sports memorabilia, but not him. 
Lauren, Lauren, he's easy to buy for you. All you got to do is buy him a Babe Ruth autographed baseball. He's, oh, he's yeah. Him. No problem. Let me get right on that. <laughs> it's simple. Yeah, these two favorite players uh, from the Avalanche, Patrick Waugh and uh, mm -hmm. Forsberg. And he got to meet Peter, and Peter's a great guy, and he spent some time with him. So that's good. Yeah. Patrick Watt, I don't know what kind of conversation that would be. He's nuts. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, he, is. <laughs> he pushes it out there. Not as much as Briz. <laughs> right. How are we doing? Um, uh, my uh, my vision isn't that clear. How are we doing? We have any questions from anybody that we need to address? Go ahead, Lauren. Uh, well, we ha we do have one from Brian Brown. He's just asking what your thoughts are on the '80s teams. Let's say again. What your thoughts are on the teams from the 80s? Oh, the 80s. Wow. That was Mike Keenan at the time. And Mike was different. I mean, uh, those teams were pretty good. I mean, we had a team that won 35 in a row. Or not won, but run defeated 35. I think that was the 80s. Pete yep. Peters was the goalie. Yep. Pete Peters, really wild guy, you know. <laughs> he just could stop the puck, and he, was, he did it at that point. Uh, that team was good. The team that uh, went to the finals was real good in 86, 87. And that was with Keenan. And he molded those teams. And he did things that got the guys so mad at him that they wanted to play for him. But one thing he did is he once put on the equipment and went out. He got dressed just like a player. And he said, we're going to scrimmage. And I'm on one of the teams. And anybody wants to take a shot at me, do it. <laughs> and a lot of guys took runs at him. You know, he got a, he didn't get along real good with Mel and B. I was there once when Scotty, who was a great guy, he, and he had Scotty dressed in a different room than the whole team. <laughs> so Scott came in and he's looking for his locker, and he asked the trainers, "Hey, my stuff's not here." They said, "Your stuff's in the next room." He goes in; he's the only guy in the next room. So I mean, Mike, Mike played games, but I really liked Mike. I got along really well with him. And, you know, he had a band. Nick and the Nice Guys. And uh, yeah, I remember being the, the – he played once for the team and, and some guests over Jersey, and what a, what a time we had. They were a good, good band. I forget what his he played, but he was a pit. But the teams in the 80s were good good players. I like them all. So I've been through the good bad. I got a question Great. for you. Who do you think the most underrated player was? Well, that's a really good question. Um, most underrated player. It's pretty hard to do that because, you know, most of the guys, they went to the forefront. Um, I guess it would be, as far as fans go, Brad McCrimmon, who uh, people said, well, you know, you play with Howie, so how could you not be great with Howie? But he was like plus 75 or something like that. I mean, he, he was good in his own right and continued to be good. When he was traded. So I think that's my answer. Brad McCrimmon, God bless him. He went down with a, a whole team of players over in Russia. And uh, great guy. Uh, sad, sad day. Players have lost but quite a few people. Yeah. Disney, yeah. Dimitri, he was gone. He's gone. And Brad. Uh, Who was the. Um, Kelly. Speak, speak, yeah. Speak, uh, the 80s, 80s guy died of a blood disorder. Yeah, it's, it was a young guy, early years. We named the trophy after him. There's a trophy named after him that we give out. Uh, I don't know. I don't have it right now. Yeah, we've had we've had some uh, yeah. some some really weird ones. Yeah, it's tough. You know. I mean, you lose you lose people, and then and then all this stuff with uh, you know uh, twenty three there, Oscar. And yes. he's the nominee for the Masters and Trophy, Peter by the way. Peter Zezel. Peter Zezel. Peter Zezel. Zezel. I just bought Jack, Jack Broder, our resident hockey guy. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. Yeah, Peter Zezel. Peter Zezel. But he was he, he, he passed away after he had left our team. Right, yes. There was a young guy, and I don't remember who it was, uh, early on. He may have played one year or played, you know, very little with the team. And... Uh, I'll let you know when I remember. <laughs> it's, all good. it's all good. So enough flyers talk. 
Is there such a thing? There is not enough Flyers talk ever. No. But all right, two hey. sec, two seconds. Your most favorite non-Flyers player? Uh, Steve Eiserman. Very nice. Uh, when I was working with that glass, I would often talk to the captains from teams that came in. You know, they would say, uh, tr check, check the goal for number 25 or check for an assist of 15 or this and that and the other. So Steve used to come over and he would talk to me a lot and um, got to know uh, to the point where, you know, I, when he was in the box one time, I said, Steve, can you sign a stick for me after? He says, sure, no problem. So he scores a hat trick. He's the first star in the game. So I said, the first star, Steve Eiserman from Detroit. And they sort of half boom, half not. He skates all the way over to me and hands me the stick. The stick. Right? He says, come up, I'll sign it. Okay. So after that, in All-Star, I guess it would have been 76. I don't remember exactly. Maybe the second All-Star. When Steve was still playing, my family and I, we were at the All-Star Banquet, which was down at uh, Penn's Landing somewhere at a pier. And Steve, out of, out of clear blue, I get tapped on the shoulder, and it's Steve. And he says, Lou, how are you? I said, I'm good. He said, can I sit down with you meet your family? Sure. Sits down, meets everybody, and uh, stays with us for 15, 20 minutes. It's a lot like the Forsberg story. And, and just a tremendous guy. Uh, so further on, the stick was a coho. It was real thin, had rounded corners on it, and it was almost oval. So his autograph had sort of faded off it. He was in with Tampa. I brought it to the game, and I knew he was going to be in. And I brought it in. I said, is, is uh, Stevie inside? And he was in the side room where the guys take their clothes off and, and pick up their suits. And I said, the guys are you know, getting ready. And I said, Steve, would you do me a favor? Would you re-sign the stick? He gave it to me, and I counted it. He said, I remember. He said, yeah. And he said, anybody got a short thing? You know? And the guys now, the players are saying, that was your stick. That was your stick. <laughs> I mean, I, I have to bring it over sometime and show Carl. And it, 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 it was definitely a goal scorer stick, boy, I'll tell you. Uh, and he said, yeah, that's what I played with, you know, back in the wooden days. And uh, they couldn't believe it. The players just gave him a ration of crap. About it. <laughs> it's funny. What do we do with that? So, Hockey talk is over. Great player. Great so, player. So we, oh, great run in with the Red Wings. Oh, he's back there now. Yeah. Yep. Back back where he belongs. Hopefully uh, get it straightened out. Yeah. Free pizza pies for life, you know. <laughs> the Illich family. So right. we had a little bit we, we had a little bit of help. We had we had a little bit of help. Yannick Dupree is that the, the player that you were thinking there about? Is. There you go. That's it. That was the boating accident. No, no, no. He died of some sort of I think it was a, some sort of a cancer. Oh, uh, okay. Mm. Uh, the boating accident was Tertishny. Uh, Tertishny fell off the boat and they ran him over. By the oh. time they got him back, he had blood out. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. Way to go on that name. Um. So other than hockey, Lou, what would you say your next favorite sport is? Soccer. I love soccer. I watch the uh, Premier League Saturdays and Sundays if I can. And uh, I've only been to a couple of union games. But, uh, I, uh, you know, it's just it, it, going and uh, I, I guess I could go and sit in the press box and all that kind of jazz, but I don't like to you know, ask people to do that. But, um, yeah, soccer. And I like baseball. I love baseball. I don't go a lot, but I think that's just the most relaxing thing you can go to. I love baseball. And I enjoy the inter inter intricacies. You know, a one to nothing game is great. You know, Absolutely. some people want the game to be 17-16. I want a one to nothing game or a 3-2 to two game. And I guess we're going to have designated hitters soon in the National League, right? So looks that way. Strategy. Yeah. I don't know. Bound Maybe to happen sooner or later. My answer. I like soccer. I played. So. Okay. 
So, Mr. Fightins there, uh, Anthony Pignetti, we need to get Lou up to uh, Reading when we got baseball again and have him throw out a first pitch. Sure, Can anytime you like. Happen? Anytime. Make that happen? Absolutely. Just let me know. I got to practice. <laughs> <laughs> be, like, be like Luke Lelouch. That would be yeah. great. Would be, yeah, I'd love to do that. Sure, absolutely. Nice. Very we great. just got to get baseball back for that to happen. Yeah. Oh, well. I don't know. What's, what's going on now is crazy, and uh, I guess these guys don't trust the numbers either side. And uh, if, if I'm going to be on one side, it would be with the agreement already agreed to. If it's signed, of course, I don't know all the, all the nuances. I know the Middletons pretty well. Our kids play hockey together, so never smoked one of their cheap cigars. But uh, I guess he's got a good point with what they're saying, he and the owners doing, and the players too. But somehow they got to compromise and make it work. Yes. And get it back. Well, exactly. And it doesn't seem like all the owners agree with each other because Milton's out there, you know, trying to help, you know, support the uh, employees. And he's going, the, seems to be going that extra mile a little bit more, more so than other owners are, are willing to do. So it's, you know, um, it's, it's, it's a shame. Um, yeah. He's a, he's a good guy. I mean, he's, uh, we'd be at the games. We'd be sitting next to one another, Harford school hockey games. And, uh, He'd be reading a prospectus. At that point, he was building hotels. I think he has a few of the the, uh, the hotels around here. And uh, he was reading prospectus all the time. I said, John, relax. Watch the game. Yeah, yeah, I will, Lou. I will. When I finish this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Whatever. So, so uh, he's got the Phillies, and I've got a book. Who was right? Yeah. There you and go. good book for 20 bucks. Right here. <laughs> Right here, I'm campaigning this book for Father's Day. So, come yes, on, guys. you are, Carl. I hear that. You can get it with Lou on Facebook. He's very, uh, very personable. So you can uh, send him a friend request if you're not friends with him already. Um, it's a great read. It's a great book. And um, nice, you're my best sales guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think it's great. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, you know, as Carl said, if you want to come pick it up here and make sure you get it for Father's Day, yep. I'll bring them over. I'm not far from here. I'm 15 minutes away. Positively. And, uh, yeah, positively. I can make that happen. Or throw it in the mail. Whatever. All right. Looks like we got it back. Message. That'll do it. Private right. message on Facebook to Lou Nolan, and uh, the rest is history. All right. You're very uh, approachable down there at the games. People coming down to take photos with you in the, in the box before the game. Yeah, the well, periods. not before. Intermissions. Intermissions. Before is nuts. Right. You know, stuff happens quick. But, yeah, I started that when we got the door on that side. You know, somebody I know came in, and I was talking to them. And now I sort of have visitors all the time. All the time. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. People want That's a picture awesome. or something. We just bring them in and take a picture. Yep. Why not? That's awesome. I mean, how often can that happen? Yeah, no, it's that's fun. that's totally cool. It's fun. Totally cool. Did we uh, we have anybody online that uh, has any last uh, last requests? No, we pretty much covered everybody's questions. Yep. Yeah, we all good. Yeah, we are good. Donnie, uh, you got a segue on number sixteen. You wanna you wanna wrap that up for us? Well, we got um, we got we got our uh, sixteen. We got Don money for the Phillies. Uh, we have Norm Sneed for the Eagles, uh, Marquise Spates for the Sixers, and Bobby Clark for the Flyers. Uh, so, you know, get your votes in. We're going to have the, the poll going live. <laughs> the poll is going to go live probably in the next 15, 20 minutes. Um, and once we get off the air here, we'll be able to uh, get that up. And uh, it goes until tomorrow at 730. Um, so get those votes in. Million ballots. <laughs> well, well you, you've watched some of these shows that I guess I'm guessing from that comment. <laughs> hey guys, thanks for having me on here. I had a great time. Thanks thank for coming. You. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Happy awesome. He's, he's thanking us. Right. right? Exactly. 
It just it's shows you what type of guy he is. Right? Right? You want to know where my love and my passion is with hockey guys. There <laughs> exactly. it is. Well, there I appreciate it. Is. it. Absolutely. Just know it, folks. Thank all you. Right. Thank yes. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, yeah, I'm all trying. Right. I'm trying. <laughs> that brings us to 730. All so, right. I guess that, that's it for tonight. We will see you next Wednesday at 630. And I guess we'll be doing 17 at that point. Yep. Uh, comes after 16. Last <laughs> time I checked. At least I, can, I even I can... know that number. <laughs> <laughs> 17 is going to be an interesting one. We, we, got, we got some uh, good matchups in, in 17. All right. Can't wait. Oh, Lou's already doing his homework for number 17. Hi, Brindamore. Peace. Another hockey guy. There you, there go. you go. There you go. I guess that, oh, I yeah. guess that's <laughs> yeah. So All right. Yeah. And with guys, thank you. Yep. Thanks. With that, great rest of the week. Yep. We'll see, see you later. See you guys see you later. Thank you.